Middle. Good morning to everyone. I am very happy to introduce Dr. Yamini, who who is one of our alumni, and she was one of the best students here. I think I have handled one course, biometrics course, at that time, and uh, she used to be very enthusiastic, and also we used to have good discussions in the class in those days. And uh, now she is a technical officer for Dean SPGS in. Uh, Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agriculture University, Rajendra Nagar, and she has specialization in PGNP as well as rice. And today she is going to present about molecular breeding for garlic and bacterial blight resistance in rice. Yami, the floor is yours. All the best. Oh, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, I'm happy to be here uh, in my own department. It was in 97, 99. I have completed my MSc here, and uh, all uh, uh, Kalaymagal Madam, Rajeshwari Madam, all uh, all are known people. So I feel that I'm back to my own place now. So I don't feel like a newcomer, despite so many years. And I thank the university TNAU and uh, also my university PJTSAU registrar has permitted me to be here before you to have conducted this viva as well as for this. Uh, uh opportunity to present my work here so i'll be presenting today on the molecular breeding work that i have been involved in uh, my university that is uh, pjtsau agricultural university at hyderabad um so basically molecular breeding for garlic and bacterial blight resistance in rice which i have worked uh, for the past several years um i was actually uh, i joined pjtsau in the year 2007 and up to 2012 i have worked in the regional agricultural research station varangal so varangal is one of the hot spots in the country for the pest garlic in rice rice is the major mandate crop there rice pgnp and cotton these three are the crops there so i was posted in the rice uh, breeding scheme as well as uh, um, i was in charge of the biotechnology lab basically i have been involved in establishing the biotechnology lab we just had a room big room which was given to me as soon as i joined as an assistant professor and we established the lab there so today i want to and then uh, from 2012 to 2020 i worked in the department of biotechnology at rajendranagar hyderabad and from 2020 i am working in the administrative office as technical officer to dean spgs so i'm today presenting the molecular breeding work that i have involved in so so this is just basically introduction about rice and the importance of rice you all we all know and there's lots of lots of uh, losses uh, due to biotic and abiotic stresses and among the biotic stresses the two pests Uh, the garlic and bacterial blight these two which uh, we concentrated of course our university we are working in rice in holistically we have developed lines which are having uh, blast resistance and bph also lot of work is going on though not uh, much success but uh, to some extent lot of work we are doing in developing uh, blast sheet blight resistance and bph resistance also we are working on but i concentrated on garlic and bacterial blight resistance in rice so this is the pest garlic uh, which causes around 80 dollars uh, 80 million dollars in india and 500 million dollars in asia is the reported losses that this cause and uh, of course many many rice growing areas uh, this pest occurs in the country and uh, there are uh, it, a lot of occurrence in telangana and andhra pradesh too so the basic uh, thing about this pest is the productive tillers the, the what can be a productive tiller get converts converted into a tubular structure it uh, that's called a gall or a silvery shoot so uh, from nursery to the end of tilling stage uh, is the attack by the pests and then you have this sort of tubular structures here so so these structures so uh, as a result you don't have the yield so that is the uh, impact that the pest uh, has so if there is a severe incidence then you have that many number of lesser uh, 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 panicles so it's total loss on the yield is what is caused by garlic so the interactions have been studied a lot between garlic and rice and uh, compatible as well as in incompatible interactions have been reported so in case of compatible interaction the insect manipulates the host and 
and it can it, it is able to survive and induce the formation of the galls in case of incompatible interaction the host plant is able to defend the insect attack and overcome it and thereby it prevents the insect from attacking so and then mod, uh, in, uh, incompatible interactions are of two types either hr positive or hr negative in case of hr positive there is a hypersensitive response that means the insect attacks and if those, the cells the immediate cells in the plant are getting killed and then insect is not able to gain entry into the plant and that that that, that is hr positive reaction in case of hr minus reaction hr negative reaction there is uh, the the non hypersensitive mediated response is there where the maggots are not able to feed not because of cell death but because there are some phytochemicals produced in those cells where the insect attacks thereby the maggots are starving and they are not able to attack so these two kinds of reactions and the in all the studies it has been reported that single approach when whenever there is only hr positive or only hr negative it is not able to give full fledged defense for the plant so whatever resistance the genetic resistance we try to build up we have to make sure that both hr positive as well as hr negative mechanisms if we are able to get into the plant then we will be having full fledged uh, and durable resistance so that was one thing which we had mind had in mind when we envisaged uh, this is uh, just to show you this is the tubular structure and this is a resistant plant where is, uh, there is no silver shoot and uh, so this is also again the images of the tubular galls that you see in rice when there are severe uh, when there is severe infection of uh, gall mish and if you see the biotypes of this insect there are around, uh, around uh, seven biotypes occurring across the country so in telangana we have two biotypes biotype 3 and so coming to the genes which have been reported there are 12 resistance genes reported for gall mish and uh, many of them have got have been tagged and mapped and four of the genes have been completely cloned and uh, the mechanism and the uh, uh, proteins involved have been identified and so for those four uh, genes we also have genic markers means you can have markers which can directly select for the resistance gene so that is there so what has been observed is there is no single gene that confers resistance for all these seven biotypes similarly there is no single biotype that is virulent against all these genes so that itself says that you if you need durable quality of resistance for all the and also maybe you need you have to combine in multiple genes and multiple mechanisms so 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 pyramiding so we have to combine multiple genes pyramiding is the approach that we have to go for so and then we found it was by the time it was reported during 2015 actually we framed this project in the year 2012 13 so at that time uh, initial there was just this report that uh, gm4 gm8 these genes might might be effective if you are able to club these genes together it will be effective for give, giving durable resistance so with that premise we went ahead and similarly another thing which we concentrated on was bacterial blight because constantly this bacterial blight is always there at the background in across multiple locations rice growing states in the country and the same thing in our state also so when we wanted to develop galmish resistance we wanted to club bacterial blight another reason also that the already some work was going on in indian institute of rice research which is also located in hyderabad so we worked totally in collaboration with indian institute of rice research so they already had some lines which had bacterial blight resistance and multiple genes combined so we took up this also so here in case of bacterial blight up to 80% losses can be caused in rice and uh, these are lesions blb lesions they are called so initially they are yellowish green and slowly they become brownish and yellowish white and slowly the whole length of the leaf starts drying so that is the law, effect of bacterial blight and this is how some on the bacterial blight station looks in the field you see the leaf here and you see the whole field how it appears when there is severe in infestation so coming to the resistant genes for bacterial blight there are 46 genes reported uh, all over the globe and uh, but three important genes that is exa13 exa21 exa and exa5 these three have been reported that if these can confer durable resistance if combined together 
so so we concentrated on these genes and especially exe 13 and 21 so we selected these two genes and we uh, incorporated these genes uh, in our study so for these genes also very closely linked markers as well as genic markers for going for permitting gene permitting approach oh this is, this is the status of the rice varieties in my university so we have so far ours is a small un younger university because uh, the earlier it was Ang uh, apau andhra pradesh agriculture university so we got split and uh, it was in 2014 that our university got uh, separated so from that time to now we have 26 varieties have been developed in rice and quite a lot of them with garbage resistance too and this is the regional agriculture association Warangal, which is one of the hot spot for garbage so in the initial years this is an old station so it was with the earlier university so initially even up to around 1997 or so there was one biotype garbage biotype one so and that got converted it, uh, the, there was mutation in that biotype and it got converted to garbage biotype four in the year around 97 98 and thereafter till 2007 also till 2002 or so it was the garbage biotype 4 but again after 2002 they have observed changes even in that biotype so now the new biotype that they have designated is garbage biotype 4m this one so presently we have garbage biotype 4m in the research station varangal rrs varangal so this is to show that at some locations Though we have uh, garbage in other locations in Telangana also, so we didn't observe changes there. But in, especially in the Varangal location, there is a, a frequent uh, change in the biotype, garbage biotype observed. So these are all the varieties developed at Varangal. So most of them at that point of time, they were developed with garbage resistance. But over the time, they have all they are all losing resistance. So to emphasize the fact that single genes alone when used they are losing the resistance so this project development of high yielding garbage resistant rice varieties uh, was started in the year 2015 the main aim was to develop durable garbage and blb resistance and mainly concentrating on the three biotypes 4m 4 and 3 so when the project started it was the united andhra pradesh so the one location ragolu also we had uh, aimed at uh, where the biotype 4 occurs so we plan to combine these three genes gm4 8 and 3 which had been reported for durable resistance and exe 13 and 21 so these five genes we wanted to combine for resistance so these are the markers we have used so most of the markers are gene link markers except rm547 because uh, when we began the project we did not have the gene link marker so we used a closely linked marker 547 is a linked marker uh, all others are uh, genic markers almost so these are the parental lines we selected mtu 1010 because it's a very good combiner and it's a very popular uh, variety grown in andhra pradesh and uh, telangana and many other states too and uh, it has a long slender grain type so we selected that variety and already we in that variety we had one line which in which the these three genes were incorporated so we use this line also as well as the mtu tent and also in our program and we got a donor when we planned the project when when the proposal initial proposal we sent we did not have this donor so we use single donors actually in the proposal but by the time we initiated the work we got one donor from icr iirr uh, they were also a part of the project so together we worked so this donor line which had uh, gm4 gm8 xa13 and xa21 genes in the background of akshaydan that is also a long slender uh, variety so we took that and we went ahead with the crossing program and another line for the gm3 gene so for all these five genes so in kharif 2014-15 we made the crosses basically the single crosses and uh, in Rabi 2015-16, we went for the intercrossing uh, to club combine all the genes, all the uh, four genes, five genes basically, four as well as five genes. 
and uh, so this is a view of the f1 in uh, rabi 1516 and this is a depiction of uh, molecular conformation for these genes in the single crosses in rabi 1516 and uh, this is the way we went forward so hari 15 the initial single crosses then uh, rabi intercrosses as well as selfing simul simultaneously then each season the intercross f1 and the single cross f2s and single cross f3 intercross f2s i think this is got jam uh, jumbled so we went ahead with this breeding program until this f7 f6 and f8 f7 i say f7 generations so the approach that we followed is each each time whenever it uh, coincides with kharif we have screened the we have raised the material in varangal which is the hot spot for galvij so naturally the galvij incidence is there so the susceptible variety tn1 is shown so it is completely and affected by galmish so then we take the scores so naturally we are able to take the score the material for galmish there so every kharif season we have phenotyped for the trait resistance to galmish and blb as well as genotypings so what we basically we do is large number of lines we raise and we select plants which are having resistance we tag the plants with jewel labels then collect the samples and then go ahead with genotyping so it's basically like uh, marker assisted selection and also um, uh, uh, conventional breeding it's clubbing both we didn't go for back cross breeding and all which requires elaborate uh, molecular work we didn't go for that method so this is the scale that we use for uh, scoring of galmich resistance at varangal so and this is uh, the how we do the bacterial blight screening whereby we inoculate uh, uh, at around uh, to one month uh, two months after transplantation around 55 days after transplantation we inoculate the culture and then take observations 15 days later and then uh, blb score we give and based on that we give the uh, uh, classify as resistance or moderate resistance or susceptibility like that so for that also we follow the standard evaluation system by iri which is the classification of resistance so each generation we have gone ahead and selected plants so and also molecular work so we identify how many are having four genes how many are having five genes among the resistant plants in kharif we first select the resistant plants and then do the molecular screening in rabi we are not able to screen for the trait so we we select the phenotypically superior plants and do the molecular screening so that approach we have used and similarly this is f2s and f1 icf1 and the f2s in kharif 2016 and this is in rabi again f3s and f2s so basically the breeding material continues in each generation and this is again in 2000 uh, 2017 f4 lines and f5 lines so this is also pcr confirmation in kharif 2017 of the lines so almost we get many of the homozygous lines here for the genes so this is in rabi 17 18 uh, we uh, get resistant as well as uh, uh, lines which are having homozygosity for all these genes so finally by kharif 2018 we were able to shortlist uh, lines which are having a completely resistant uh, gm and bb score and these are the lines which we identified finally we have developed and the ones we this is for at at varangal only so at varangal as i told you only by one biotype biotype 4m occurs whereas our aim is durable resistance for other biotypes also so some of the lines we also screened in irr where they have artificial conditions where they screen for biotype 1 so when we screen for biotype 1 also we found that many of our lines are resistant that means we are having resistance to 4m as well as 1 two biotypes so this is again the screening of uh, how the tn1 plant looks like and the resistant and moderate resistant plants look like in the field so this is a final uh, lines which long slender grain type which we have developed and uh, we also used individual donors also and made separate crosses uh, while starting the project so we had this project lines we designated as ibt wgl 
and another set of lines also for similar uh, trades ibt gm so we have ibt wgl and ibt gm a whole lot of set of lines which are having galmage and blp resistance which are having four genes and five genes and then after that we went ahead with we test this is a, a picture depicting how the artificial screening is done at indian institute of rice research in hyderabad for uh, bacterial bacterial blight and for galmage so so this ibt gm and ibt wgl lines so once we got those lines in around 2018 and by 19 we were able to have the lines so we went ahead with giving a set of lines to acrip for uh, galmit screening they have a trial called galmit screening trial they conduct it across multiple locations in the country they send the samples seed seeds and get it tested there so we get, we sent to acrip trials and also in our state we have something called mrst which is multiple resistance screening trial where the seed metal that we nominate is divided and sent it to there are about four to five locations within the state so multiple locations within the state also it is tested for not only for galmage but for other stresses also so uh, at a time we are not able to nominate all the 100 or uh, uh, plus lines so in sets of 15 or 20 we have been nominating from 2020 to 2022 also and we have found that many of the lines our lines are showing resistance if you see the acrip uh, proceedings of last few years you can see that there are ibt gm and ibt wgl lines which have been found promising and reported to have uh, resistance at least in four or five locations for galmage and they have also uh, ir also has asked us that uh, they have also asked for those lines and we are transferring those lines to them also so presently we are multiplying these lines and we are in the process of registering them with nbpgr simultaneously we have shared all these lines to our uh, other research stations at uh, within our uh, state and they are used in the using in their breeding program but what drawback we have observed despite selecting the lines for resistance and also we have taken single plant yields phenotypic selection also and resistance also meticulously despite our efforts when we uh, tried for yield trials in station yield trials we have disappointed that the yields are not on par with the normal varieties that is what we have observed in our state level uh, annual workshops but then there are scientists who have also reported that whenever there is late sown conditions in some pockets when there is severe infestation of galmage they have told us that madam your lines are uh, having lesser yield penalty because when there is a situation continuous situation when the late sowing is taken up and there is severe infestation at that time our lines are performing better than the normal ones that is what is, has been reported but some we have requested them they are not able to formulate a trial for that particular situation uh, that has not been done so that has not been thoroughly tes tested in terms of trials so but we have these lines which are valuable so now what we attempted is now we'll go for registration and we'll I, this will this can be used as donors by anybody and uh, and so what we thought is why not improve these lines for yield so meanwhile at iarr they have come up with some genes lines which are having yield genes like gn1a grain number gene and os ospl14 gene for panicle signs and panicle uh, increased number of uh, uh, increased uh, size of the panicle and also scm2 strong culm2 and gw5 grain weight so this thing has come up they have got some lines from uh, uh, iri and they have built up and developed some lines with multiple genes uh, at indian institute of rice research so what we did is we selected one of our line and try to incorporate these yield genes into them this is done basically by one of our phd student i gave it to my phd student the work so we use this os spl14 and gn1a so these genes have been functionally characterized and their location and specific markers are also available when we started it was not a published marker actually but now the markers are available so we went ahead with and selected these two genes to incorporate so this is the work which is of uh, my phd student she started in uh, 2018 actually 18 batch but 19 2019 she started her work so 
one line IBTGM14, which has these five genes, and uh, consistently in ACRIP entomology trials, it has reported to be resistant. We selected. It was also recommended by our university entomologist. So, and we took this donor from IARR having these genes. And already Dr. Sundaram has reported that up to 30% higher yield they are able to get whenever in some of their lines with these genes. So we took that as the basis and we have gone ahead with crossing F1s and, uh, and then F2s again. But uh, uh, you can imagine that large population because five genes already and these two genes. So it is, though it, the presentation it looks simple. But the work is actually very voluminous to raise all these lines and screen for the genes, tag them. It's meticulous work involved. So she has done that. And then F3 uh, in Kharif season. So Kharif season, to Kharif 2021, we have gone ahead with phenotyping for uh, Galvich and bacterial blight, as well as recording of the yield traits. Uh, she lost one season Kharif 20 because of the COVID in between and the lockdown and all. So we lost uh, some time there also. So actually we had planned that she would do up to F4, but it was not possible. So up to F3 generation, uh, she has uh, um, taken up and uh, selected lines she has reported. So I'll just present the, briefly the work that she has done. So this is the seasons, Kharif 2019 to Kharif 21. And uh, these are the genes and these are the markers used uh, for these traits and uh, crossing f1 f2 f3 at uh, she has taken crop at two locations varangal as well as rajanagar so she has been traveling here and there and recording because yield we wanted at both the locations though galmich we screened only at one location so this is her uh, like molecular i i uh, f3 lines finally which she has developed and then uh, which has having these genes gm3 gm4 and gm8 and uh, exit 13 and exit 21 genes and ossplf 14 and gn1a genes for yield so and then what her, in the, her inference is out of the like after a lot of la, 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 lines first we our aim was resistance resistance in the field so resistance at warangal for galmich and resistance in our college form at hyderabad for bacterial blight so how many lines are showing resistance? So like that, in from her F3 lines, she has narrowed down and also resistance lines carrying the genes. We aim for at least four genes. Two Galmij genes, one yield gene, and one BLB gene, at least minimum. And then five genes and six genes. So in case of six genes, six genes and seven genes, all the genes. So minimum four genes we have aimed at. So based on that, 153 lines she has shortlisted and 61 and 60 lines out of these were showed higher yield at college form and RAR Varangal respectively. And uh, among the selected lines, this is the just uh, classification. Some of them have commonly showed higher yield at both locations. Some of them have shown higher yield at one location compared to the checks and the male parent. And some of them have showed only at Varangal. And among these also, there are lines which are having both Galmage and BLB resistance and some lines, few lines only with Galmage resistance, few lines only with BLB resistance. Uh, so the criteria which we framed is homozygous for the all the target genes, that is minimum four genes, a maximum of seven genes, but homozygosity and field resistance to Galmage and bacterial blight. And then yield should be higher at least MTU1010, higher than MTU1010, which is the uh, good variety. And the best one is the male parent, the YPB donor, which we select from the IRR. So, so 89 plants she found, which are having resistance to GM and BB, and which is having higher yield than MTU1010. She has lost, shortlisted. Out of this, there are different combinations. 7 gene, 6 gene, 5 gene, and 4 gene combinations lines we are having. So out of them, 89 also, majority of them are having both the yield genes also. 83 are having both the yield genes. Five plants have single gene and one was having this GN1A gene. Among these 89, resistance-wise also, 60 plants had both the resistance, Galmage and BLB. Some have only GM and we also found discrepancies. Genes are present, but still resistance is not there. That also we have found sometimes in some of these plants. 
So our, in this 18, there are also 16 plants which were on par with YPB 46. That means very high, high yielding, almost like the male parent. So we could not get for some reason above YPB, we did not get any line. But so this is the material, so generator. And uh, we have found an 8.792 up to 64 with an average of 34% yield increase. We have found among these 89 lines. And uh, as when both the genes were present yield genes, the uh, yield increases more, even up to 64% uh, compared to the single genes. So these two gene combination is better compared to single genes is one inference. And GM3, 4 and 8, or at least 4 and 8 combination is better than the single genes. That is the second inference. And then pyramiding is a viable approach for both yield and resistance. That is the uh, inference that we got from her work. And right now, these 89 lines we have made into three sets. And it was that suggested in her viva when she presented her PhD work. So the external suggested that the material be distributed. They asked us what, how you're going to go, go ahead because I am in the administrative office and she wants to wind up her work and leave quickly because in between one year she had lost due to the COVID also. So, so we took suggestions of uh, the external ex expert as well as uh, Dr. Sundram of IARR and we have made into three sets. We have given one set to ICR IARR one set at RARS Warangal, which is a hot spot for them, these lines are valuable. And also Institute of Rice Research within our university, which is at Rajan Nagar. So, so they are evaluating. So now efforts are raised there and they are, they'll be making selections and uh, screening and genotyping also they are taking up and they'll be taking ahead with towards varietal release these lines. So that is the status of this work now. So, so that's about the work that I have done, so which I wanted to present to you. So basically we have some lines which are having resistance and good donors and also some lines which, where we have been able to improve the yield. So we are hoping that in few years we will see the outcome of this work. So these are some of the other contributions that I have involved in ESTSR markers development in Safflar and Castor with ICR IOR and also biotechnology lab establishment at Warangal. And these are the rice varieties which I have been involved in. And in, uh, recently, this year, there is one variety, WGL1119, which is having single uh, GM4 gene, which has been recommended for release. It is a marker-rested breeding variety, which I had initiated uh, when I was at Warangal, and it was taken forward by other scientists. So, and uh, I have also been involved in identifying SMD and wilt-resistant PGNP lines in uh, collaboration with ICRISAT. And uh, those lines are being used in our resuscitation now and also in at ICRISAT. And apart from that, four external projects I have handled. And one new project I have got, which we are about to, which almost initiated because the crop has been raised at multiple locations for that particular project now. And I have guided uh, more than 20 students and taught courses. And that's about it. And uh, I thank you all for this opportunity. <laughs> to present my work here, sir. One part of my work, the rice uh, work I have presented. Thank you very much, madam. And I thank uh, TNAO for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. So any anybody who wants to ask anything, please welcome. So present uh, very nice work because it is possible only rice crop. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have one question because you used IC lines having four genes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Madam, basically, shortage of funds and manpower, ma'am, I should be frank. Because DBT, the funds that we ask, the funds that they have given is very less. And we didn't want to. And one more thing is, in our uh, university, we had earlier DBT projects with backcross breeding approach. But we have not been successfully in getting the entire background despite using uh, enough number of markers. So I have also involved as Copia in that earlier project by Dr. Durgarani. She has concentrated on uh, BLAST, one Galmid gene, and BLV genes. She has tried to do backcross breeding. So we have not been able to achieve success of uh, getting a particular background entirely, uh, madam. So I, I felt that why not go for pedigree breeding where we are open. We are open. Ultimately, what we need is we need a, 
high yielding line which farmers can use and which we can all use so whether it's back cross breeding or whichever approach we need the result so why should go why should we go for an approach where more manpower and more staff and more uh, we do investment and then also we are not sure whether we will achieve or not that is my personal opinion ma'am you it's always uh, yes ma'am yeah no that's why we have not uh, used uh, any wild type plants man we have we were lucky that iors in the neighborhood so they have already uh, put those genes into uh, ypb which is a long slender uh, background actually uh, sundaram sir gave us two lines one with ms uh, one in which the yield genes are in medium slender grain type background and another in which the genes are in long slender background because we developed with mtu tendon which is a long slender grain type background so we took that donor and we used it it's not the di directly from a wild background we are not using madam so and he also suggested us um um actually uh, he did suggest us as a contingency plan we ha also have done uh, one back cross madam i didn't present it here by, but because we could not go ahead much with too much of material we are not able to handle madam that is the problem also for us so one set back cross line all material we generated but we have not been able to do the complete background screening and all because for uh, want of funds and manpower madam and in fact this uh, the material outcome of this projects i did not know how to handle after that after the uh, dbt stopped the funding that is uh, the reason that this we propose this uh, um this project identification of improved rice lines with broad spectrum resistance to multiple biotics is and high yield through transitional approach basically this is only 2 years madam basically it is like mlt they are give funds we evaluate at, uh, around 4 5 locations within our university we selected so uh, the lines which we are having as well as the even the conventional breeding lines advanced lines from conventional breeding which are having all these biotics this is we included blast bph blb galmich uh, these four traits we included and also yield a little bit so we take the uh, li lines from the breeders also and we have uh, made a pool of uh, around 120 lines so these 120 lines we we want to test at uh, some four five locations in the state for four seasons to kharif and to rabi seasons and for that only we have asked for funds and this project has been sanctioned madam just a support that these lines can go ahead so mm. yes duration and grain quality we have selected yes we have selected madam medium slender only madam we have ensured madam duration uh, whenever we are raising we are raising with mtu tendon so we are sem sel selecting similar flowering duration plants only from the beginning madam from f2 early generation selection you can say from f2 we are selecting like that from f2 f3 uh, generation we are se selecting for duration and resistance for second preference and then plant type and uh, uh, phenotypically better traits more tillards and like that general traits as well as similarity to somewhat similarity to mtu tendon we are not going for precisely uh, same plant type like mtu tendon not like that uh, not very tall uh, we are ensuring those basic things we are taking care man that we have done we have tried to do that but now what recently i heard is i have transferred to institute of rice research so they have said that some some 14 15 lines are there which i think we can, they can go ahead towards a variety or like that that's what i heard but let's see ma'am keeping the fingers crossed <laughs> so yeah thank you ma'am <laughs> thank you ma'am thank you very much that's what madam that uh, 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 donor ypb46 which we took from uh, dr sundaram they have told that up to 30% we have, we have got but we have not got in ours also if you see the average but that is only up to f3 madam it is what uh, whatever the parent parent is very good madam i am having the data the students data it is at least 15 16% we have found in her mtu tendon Uh, compared to mtu tendon 
I, uh, because she has done one season, she has uh, uh, recorded the data of uh, parental lines. So uh, uh, more than 16% we have observed, madam. But in the F3 lines, F3 lines, the range is higher. But we need to see how it goes in F4, F5, how it goes, how much it stabilizes, we have to see. Traits, madam. Uh, madam, actually, the number of uh, filled grains are more. The plant type tillers, it's a number of tillers are also more, madam. Long standard only. The grain number is more, and also we found the plants tillers are more, madam. Mm, productive tillers are also more. These two things we have found. I did not present that minute because that she has not yet published, ma'am. So that the data I did not present. So the overall thing I have told. There is a photo in this. I don't know how clear it is, ma'am. I just. No, that yield donor photo is not here. Okay, okay. So, but that is with, from IRR. They're having those. We have seen them in the field also, madam. Dr. Sundram has showed us in the field those lines that we have. In fact, this molecular work for yield genes, she has done at IRR only because they are also in her committee. IRR entomologist and Dr. Sundram are in her committee. These. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. No, because I, I was keeping students in mind. Yeah. So I think it's basically I'm presenting for the students. So I thought I should tell it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am.